Hello, welcome to Casual Veteran Gamer. In the video today, we're going to be looking at the wizard. How to build one and what options you get when you level up and what some good choices are to make when you do level up and when you make your character. So for wizards, they have intelligence as their main ability modifier. So when they cast spells, we will be using intelligence. If you want the highest intelligence possible, class wizard. Now at level one, we get lots of choices, mostly about spells, completely about spells. Before we get to the spells, quick look down at features. So we have no proficiency in any armors. So usually you end up using shield, oh sorry not shield, mage armor to help increase your armor class. And we get proficiencies in a few select weapons, <laughs> intelligence and wisdom. We get spell slots at level one. I believe we get two level one spell slots. These are the spells we know and can try and prepare for the day. So these are the spells that are available to you when you're playing. You want magic missile. It's certain damage, 60 foot range. Cannot go wrong with it. I use it even at higher levels I use it. Mage armor, take it if you're not going to be wearing any armor. After that, few different choices. I'd say sleep at the moment is very strong. 24 hit points can be a couple of goblins, even three goblins taken out. And if anyone is damaged or taken damage, you can send them to sleep. Very effective battlefield control. Then we've got two more to choose. Color spray is quite good. You can blind creatures. Not as good as sleep in terms of the effect, but sleep can't affect as many creatures in one go. Long Strider is okay, but other classes get access to that, as do some races. Don't really need to take that. Jump is good, but only lasts for effectively a minute. So just for one combat. But it's really quite powerful when you do use it. I'd probably take Jump. Find Familiar. If you haven't got any other classes that are going to be using any sort of Familiar, this definitely, definitely would take this. Grease just creates some difficult terrain, which creatures can fall prone. Lots of choices, right, what am I going to take? I like Thunder Wave, just because like, it's AoE damage, only level 1 that does AoE damage. That's area effect damage, so if you didn't know that. And... Oh, it's not the only level 1, because here's the other one, Burning Hands. Do you know what? I'm going to take Long Shrider Wave for now. These spells here are the spells that you will be able to cast immediately. When you're not in combat, wizards can actually change these around. It isn't how it works in Dungeons and Dragons, but it's just how they decided to make it work for the game. To begin with, two, three, four. These are combat spells. I've taken these magic missile, I always want this ready. So I can potentially hit people. Mage armor, always want ready, so you can give yourself a high armor class. Sleep battlefield control. So you can take enemies out of the combat for a round or two. And Thunder Wave, my personal favourite AoE. Basically because of how it sounds and how it looks, but it does also throw creatures away. Now the point of this video isn't to go through all the spells right now. But these are these are not bad picks. Though some people might not like Thunder Wave. Alright, and then this down here. So when you're out of combat, you can recover some spell slots. So you don't have to have a long rest. As you level up, you can recover more spell slots. Cantrips. Right, should have gone through these first. So for cantrips, we want... I'm not going to take Mage Hand. I'm going to take a different cantrip apart from that. Firebolt, Rare Frost, I think are two decent cantrips. Firebolt doesn't do as much damage. 1d6 instead of 1d8, but can set things on fire. This is always useful, useful to have that ability. Rare Frost does more damage. Also creates the ice, which can make creatures fall prone. And then their turn is wasted if they fall prone during their turn. Don't necessarily need another damaging cantrip. However, shock and grasp is useful. We've already used a bonus action for something. Because we're about to jump away. And I'll leave shock and grasp out. As a splash blade ward. What am I going to choose? I'm going to choose light. Because it's good for the characters that don't have dark vision to have light. And then we come to 
races. So as I said earlier, intelligence is what we're looking for. So high elf, good choice, almost classic choice, stereotypical choice. We've got intelligence plus one here. We get proficiency with a few different weapons, which is great because then we can use long bows and short bows. We get extra two dexterity, which help with armor class. Combat put to sleep. We get proficiency in skill and dark vision. So for high elf, solid, solid choice. Wood elf, I would not choose. Tiefling, we got a couple of choices. We got Asmodeus Tiefling because we get intelligence plus two. The Charisma isn't so useful, but it's not too important to have, uh, or it's necessary to have Dexterity or Constitution. We get Resistance to Fire and Dark Vision. We also get a different cantrip. We got Thermotogy with the previous Tiefling. With this Tiefling, we get the Mage Hand cantrip. Again, we got Intelligence plus one, otherwise it's the same. So I'm just going to show you the other Tiefling that has Intelligence and Charisma. There is strength and charisma. I wouldn't take that. It doesn't have intelligence. A drow, dexterity and charisma, no intelligence. We don't want that. Human, intelligence. Eh, not so great. I mean, wizards really just want high intelligence. Githyanki is an interesting choice. Because you get intelligence. You get the strength. Not so useful. But it's the other things we get that are useful. So we proficiency in light and medium armor. We proficiency in short sword, long sword, great sword. No ranged weapons, mind you. You could have a great sword on your wizard. They get Mage Hand, which is invisible. And then at level 3, they get the jump. They can cast jump. Which is actually one of the spells I prepared. So Gith Yankee could be really good. It saves you having to cast shield. If you can get some decent medium armor, probably. Dwarf. There's no intelligence for the dwarf. No, I mean, intelligence modifier for the dwarf. Half elf, you can make work just about because you can choose to put something into intelligence. However, we have stuck with two in charisma, which isn't great, but it's okay because we can get one extra cantrip, or for a wood elf, we get proficiency in stealth or extra speed. Quick look at halfling, dexterity in charisma, dexterity in constitution. My top picks would probably be elf because we get these proficiencies, some dexterity in intelligence, which is pretty much what we want. And we get one extra cantrip. It's never bad having more cantrips. Tiefling can work if you want fire resistance, which is not a bad thing at all to have in this game at the moment. And they get some extra abilities at level 3 as well. Or Gith Yankee. I'm going to try Gith Yankee. I don't know how effective it would be. The only downside to Gith Yankee compared to the elf is we only get strength plus 2 here, as the elf has dexterity plus 2. But in the end, it doesn't really matter, apart from that our maximum dexterity right now is only going to be 15 rather than 16 or 17. Right, what did I say? We need intelligence. So intelligence, maximum 16. This would basically be, yeah, if I'm using Githyanki, this is definitely the build to use. Plus 2 dexterity, plus 2 constitution, plus 3 intelligence modifiers. That's all we really need. In terms of wearing armour, so... At the moment, if we cast Mage Armor, we're going to have an extra 3 armor class, so it'll be up to 15. If we put on Medium Armor, which we'll be able to do as a Gith Yankee, once we find some Medium Armor, Medium Armor's here start off armor class 13 or 14, roughly. So if we start off at armor class 13, then we get to AC 15. So I'm going to take this. The reason for this is that I don't have to use a spell slot every single day for casting Mage Armor. So I'm going to go back to my class. I'm going to leave this in for now, because I won't have medium armor to start with, I'm only a wizard. So, I'm not going to take it off now, but eventually you can not you can stop preparing mage armor. And the number of spells you can prepare is dependent on your charisma modifier and level. So the reason this is 4 is because I'm level 1, and then plus 3 intelligence modifier. I think I just said charisma modifier, I meant intelligence modifier. 1 plus 3 equals 4. Let's quickly go back to origin. I'm going to be male Githyanki. I'm going to be CVG. Right, what do I want? I definitely want Arcana. And I mean, I'd quite like to have stealth, but it's not that important. Right, yeah, I think that will do for my Githyanki wizard. So there we are. I'm going to try Githyanki Wizard, show you what it's like as we level up. 
there are other choices there. Any any subclass that has intelligence as a modifier is is gonna you're gonna be able to make work quite easily. Alright, so I'm gonna go and venture forth. I'll see you later when we get to level two, three, and four. Here I am on the level up screen for a wizard, for level one to level two. First thing we'll notice that we get to choose our prepared spells. This doesn't matter so much, we can change this at any point, as long as we're not in a battle. Next choice we get is a subclass, evocation school or abjuration school. The subclass feature here for the evocation wizard is that they get sculpt spells. So if there's like an area effect spell and one of your allies is inside the area, then they don't take any damage. So this allows you to be reckless, not really not reckless, but you'd have to worry too much about the area of effect when the area effect spells. You'd have to try and find a space that exactly has it so there isn't an ally in the in the area. I think this is pretty useful because then you can use some area effect spells. The areas aren't you can't change so much. Things that are like Thunder Wave or Burning Hands, where there's a cone or a cube that doesn't you can't change the distance so much. For the abjuration school, the other choice the subclass features Arcane Ward. So if you cast a spell that's from the Abjuration School, then you get a shield that has, in this case, a maximum of three hit points. And whenever you cast a leveled spell from the Abjuration School, a level one or higher spell from the Abjuration School, then it re replenishes this hit point maximum. I've got to say, I do prefer the Evocation School because you can then use air effect spells without having to worry as much as about causing damage. Abjuration School is, it's okay, but there aren't very many Abjuration spells in the game at the moment. Mostly being, I think, yeah, Protection from Good and Evil is one. And the other one I can show you here is Mage Armor. So, I mean, it's kind of okay. We can cast Mage Armor at the beginning of the day and get an extra three hit points at the moment. I think that value increases as we level up at different points. Apart from that, all the others... Okay, there's protection from good and evil. On abjuration spells. So we've only got two spells to choose from at the moment. So I don't think it's that great. Because the only spell I've really cast, found myself casting is Mage Armor. This one you protect a creature against certain... Uh, certain, well... Other, other creature types like Aberration, Celestials, Elementals, Faith, Fiends and Undead. But... There aren't... You're not always going to be fighting those. You're not always going to be casting protection from good and evil. This is as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to get the next three hit points at the beginning of the day. And that's it. Because you don't need to cast Mage Armor more than once in a day. So do very much prefer the Evocation School. And the last thing we get to choose at level 2 are two more spells to add to the spells that we know and are in our spell book. So we've got the same choice as before. Because we've got a Gith Yankee, I'm not going to choose Jump. False Life is decent. Gain an extra five temporary hit points, but I'm going to be using aid, prob probably. So I don't need to use take false life. So what's going to take? We have sickness. I can take that, and I'd suggest maybe either featherfall or color spray. I'm not going to go over all the spells right now. That'll be a topic for a different video. Although I'm an evocation wizard, I could use burning hands. Actually, I'll take that instead of color spray. I've already got sleep. That will do. All right, and that's it for level two. No other choices. Uh, so I'll see you next time when I get to level 3. Although I will be using the Evocation School myself, I still want to show you what the Abjuration School can do. So let's start off. Always a good idea. Casting Mage Armor. As we can see, we've got Mage Armor. I'm a class plus 3. Okay, nice. Arcane Ward. Magical Barrier protects, uh, protects hit points. It's got 3 hit points. And let's just check whether this works with False Life. So let's take off Mage Armor since I don't need to cast that anymore. Add False Life. So let's have a look here. We now have plus seven. And let's look at this here. So bolster yourself with a necro necrotic, a necromantic facsimile of life to gain five temporary hit points. I've got to say I'm a little bit confused as to how this has all worked out because that plus seven, I don't know where it's come from. Five should be from False Life, and then three should be from Arcane Ward, but this is now at seven, and five plus three is eight. Let's just come down to the bottom to see, what, see if anything's happened. I've lost condition Arcane Ward. Received condition False Life, though it says False Life, it should just be five temporary hit points. 
I'm going to cast one more Abjuration spell. Let me get rid of that and add that. Let's see what happens. So I've got false life, protection from good and evil, a cast abjuration spell. It doesn't say I've gained the condition of arcane ward. I've still got an extra seven hit points. So currently it looks like temporary hit points and the arcane ward don't quite work together properly. Maybe a couple of bugs. But I think that with the lack of abjuration spells for a wizard, that this isn't necessarily the best choice. It's okay, um, but. I feel like the evocation school is going to be better. Now I want to just use Arcane Recovery. So I'm going to get back two first level spells and just show you what happens. If I use Thunder Wave, you can see my allies are going to be knocked back. Uh, if it was an evocation wizard, this would not happen. But let's just show you, prove it, right? Shut up there, failed a saving throw, got knocked back. These two passed, took some damage. So yeah, overall, I don't think that the Abjuration Wizard is a particularly good choice. I just want to point out, I found a great sword. My Gift Yankee Wizard is now wielding a great sword. Not common for a wizard to be able to do such a thing. There we are, great sword, 2d6. Not going to do much damage. I don't have any strength or modifier. Well, it's zero, so my strength modifier is zero. So I don't have any extra chance to hit based on strength. I don't do any extra damage based on strength. So no, it's not the best thing a wizard could have. But if a wizard is going to be using a melee weapon, I think a great sword is not a bad thing to be using. Quite fearsome. I've got a situation set up here to try and show you the effect of the Evocation School subclass feature. So I've got two Intellect of Arrows just about close enough together. So if I use Thunder Wave... You can see it's just about going to hit both of them. We can see the white lines indicating where they'll fall if they fail their saving throw. But interestingly, I've got, I'm going to use it like this, and you can see that my own other character, my other party member, isn't affected by this. The other white line from back here is from the dead body. So no matter what I do, my ally isn't going to get hurt. So let's see how this pans out. All right, one failed the throw, got knocked back. One passed the throw, but still died from the damage done. Anyway, so it's useful. I set it up on purpose to try and show you that. You won't always find yourself in that situation. However, you'll be thankful that you picked it when you are in such a situation. One of the core features of a wizard, and something that makes a wizard a wizard in Dungeons and Dragons, is the ability to scribe spells into a spellbook. We don't see a physical spellbook in the game, but we can assume that the spells prepared here are essentially the spellbook. You can see one of, something that's happening in early access, I don't know if this is going to change, I imagine it will, is wizards can actually currently learn cleric spells and add them into their spell book. So much earlier in the game, I made Gale learn Guiding Bolt. Now normally, Guiding Bolt, I would think, would use the Wisdom modifier, but actually, it still uses his Intelligence modifier, because I guess for him it counts as a wizard spell. I'm not actually going to hit Lazel, but you can see the chance to hit with Guiding Bolt is 55%. If I switch that to a wizard cantrip, it's still 55%, so they're both using the same bonuses to hit. I'll show you just how to scribe a scroll. I've put a few scrolls into his bag. I don't need to do that, but I just did for the sake of ease. So scroll of animal friendship, right click on it, learn spell, 50 gold. Done, it's now in his spell book. What about scroll of silence? Learn spell, 100 gold. I'll get to the difference in price soon. And then scroll of detect thoughts. 100 gold. Go to press K on the keyboard to open this up. And now I've got Animal Friendship as something I can cast. Take away Golden Bolt. Add in Animal Friendship. Oh, we can just do that anyway. And what else? Detect Thoughts is here. Silence is here. And now the reason for the difference in price is the level of the spell. So level 1 spell costs 50 gold. Level 2 spell cost 100 gold, and I imagine a level 3 spell would cost 150 gold, so the level of the spell times by 50. So you can actually make your wizard quite a versatile caster, if you can find all the spells, all the spells that you want. So uh, Scroll of Inflict Wounds, I can't remember if he's learned it already, he hasn't. There we are, now he, can, now he can cast it. So you can actually turn your wizard into something of a, I wouldn't say half cleric, but if you found spell scrolls that have cleric spells on them you can actually give it to your wizard 
quite useful. You can learn, you can even learn cantrips. So now he's got the shock and grasp cantrip. That's for 50 gold. Which in the long term is like easily worth it because there are only a limited number of cantrips. And eventually you're gonna get quite rich. You can see here I've got 1,426 gold. And in all honesty, at some point I made loads of gold. I killed a few people I maybe I shouldn't have killed. So yeah, core cool feature of a wizard, you can add spells to the spells that you know. Whereas other classes either just gain a certain amount of spells they can prepare, like a cleric, or maybe you get to choose which spells you want on a level up, such as a warlock, which has a very limited number of spells. One of the benefits of choosing a Githyanki wizard is the proficiency in um, light armor and medium armor. What I've done is taken the Githyanki half plate from Lazel. I'm planning on not using her in the party and giving it to my wizard, who he now has a number class of 17, which is quite good for most classes and the level we're playing at, 17 is really not that bad. And also, it was apart from having a higher armor class, I don't need to worry about having the mage armor spell prepared, and I can swap it out for something else, maybe I'll have fine familiar. Yeah, long shot is fine. The major downside to doing this though, is that this armor has quite a large weight, 36, and disadvantage on the stealth rolls. Since my wizard only has 10 strength, that's used up quite a lot of the amount of weight that can be carried maximum so you also have to take that into account if it's something you feel worried about i can't have the wizard picking up too many things there's one benefit of having a higher strength is that you can just carry more stuff and wear heavier stuff in general obviously if i want to go and use lazelle i'll have to find her replacement armor or swap this back in so do be careful if you're going to do this and also maybe there's some things like a robe that has a a bonus to it or some sort of add-on that will be more beneficial than just having a higher armor class so do take that into account the same can be done if you're using a a dwarf i think it's a hill dwarf one of the dwarf subclasses gets proficiency in light armor and medium armor also this would also work for them my wizard has just got to level three this is the level up screen and we don't get any choices apart from what spells we get so we get to choose two new spells that our wizard will have in his spell book. Uh, I would advise going for level 2 spells since this is now available to you. And there are a decent number of spells here that are effective, especially in combat. I'm not going to rank all of them, just going to quickly mention a few of them. Most of the level 2 spells, in fact. Mouth's Acid Arrow isn't great, but it's guaranteed damage, and if, the, if it actually hits, then the target will actually take damage for two turns not a great deal of damage but two chances to knock them out of concentration if needed sadly the second bit of damage it happens at the end of the target's turn rather than at the beginning blur is okay it gives this advantage on attacks but it's concentration so you can, you can quite easily lose it mirror image is amazing as a defensive spell doesn't require concentration shoots your armor class up by three for each mirror image you currently have so this wizard's armor class would go up by nine up to 26 which is it's just decent Misty Step, I love this one. You teleport to an unoccupied space, and it's a bonus action. And in the middle of a combat, just moving from one place to another can really change the course of a battle. I'm also going to take Shatter, because this is currently the only AoE spell that you can cast at range. So you don't have to be near your party members. You, can, you don't have to put your wizard in danger, because the level 1 AoE spells are Thunder Wave and... The, oh, the other one, I've forgotten what it is now. <laughs> Burning Hands, that's what it is. And I have to put your wizard in danger, so I'm going to take those two. Uh, so, yeah. Prepared spells, we can change these at any point anyway. Uh, I don't need Mage Armor anymore. So I'm going to put that in there, and instead of Thunder Wave, I'm going to put Shatter. Alright, and that's it. Now, because I'm Gith Yankee, at level 3, we get Jump, which can cast once per long rest. And this is really good. Um, because it's basically a free spell that is worth taking on any spellcaster anyway. Because this triples the jumping distance, and that when you see that on a fighter with a high strength, the jump distance is insane, much further than their movement speed. So they can jump around the battlefield from one place to another. All right, that's it. Going to be it for my level three wizard. Zoom into his face. For the level four wizard level up screen, I'm going to show you using Gale since I've already had him here in a previous playthrough. So at level 4, wizards get one extra cantrip. Pick what you want. I've said enough about cantrips for now, I think. Just don't pick True Strike. What am I going to pick? Uh, maybe Blade Ward. Might be good to have. 
get to pick two more spells. These can be from level one or level two. Uh, for Gale, I would definitely pick Mirror Image. He already has Misty Step. Shatter, he doesn't have Shatter, I'll give him Shatter. Even though it's level one. Prepared spells, what's going to be prepared at the moment? Get rid of Witch Bolt, maybe add a Mirror Image. Get rid of Grease and put in Shatter. And then we get the most interesting part. So we can add in two ability scores, ability improvements. I would suggest that you get your wizard up to intelligence 18, which means for Gale and the wizard I made, I'd have to put two points into intelligence. Let's have a quick look at the other feats that we could choose. Athlete, I wouldn't pick that for a wizard. I wouldn't pick anything melee or martial. I wouldn't pick for a wizard, pretty much. So no defensive duelist, no dual wielder, no great weapon master. Can't even pick heavily armored, though a Githyanki wizard would be able to. Maybe you'd want to pick this. If, especially if a strength score is odd. May as well put that strength score to use. Although uh, every increase in strength is always good because you get to carry more and jump a bit further. So if you find yourself with medium armor proficiency already on a wizard, perhaps you could take heavily armored. I wouldn't take lightly armored because you may as well just use mage armor. Magic initiates, these can be useful. These aren't that bad. You've already got some spells. Maybe you want to expand the amount of spells you've got and also the choice of spells. But you've always got to bear in mind that the spell casting modifier for a cleric is wisdom, for a warlock it's charisma, and it's quite likely that your abilities for these scores will be quite low, or at least not high. So if you do take these, you want to take spells that don't require your wisdom or charisma modifiers or aren't that important for them. Martial Adopt I wouldn't take, Mobile I wouldn't take, Moderately Armoured. I might take if my wizard is already proficient in light armour, but the races that get light armour proficiency get medium armour proficiency as well, so it's not likely that's going to be the case. I wouldn't take skill, Shield Master, wouldn't, shield, uh, Skilled if you want to take three extra proficiency, proficiencies, uh, it's never that bad, it's okay. Tough, when I played through the game the first time by myself, I actually gave Gale tough. Gave him loads of hit points, he's on about 40 hit points roughly, maybe 38, I can't remember exactly. So made him more survivable, and I wouldn't take Weapon Master. Honestly, the feats are, at the moment are geared towards martial characters. The spellcasters don't really get a great choice of feats, ones that will be useful for them anyway. So I would definitely recommend taking Intelligence, because not only... Does it increase your attacking rolls with your spells? It makes it more difficult for enemies to pass their saving throws. Also allows you to prepare one extra spell. So all in all, extra two intelligence or putting intelligence up to the next even number is going to be a very good choice for a wizard. All right, time for some final thoughts on the wizard. So. First of all, it's just almost a stereotypical character. It's massively famous, well-liked within Dungeons and & Dragons and almost any fantasy game, fantasy genre in general. Within this particular game, wizards are powerful. They get lots of choice of spells. They can increase the spells known with using scrolls, like scribing scrolls. One thing that makes wizards more powerful here than Dungeons & Dragons is we can actually change which spells we want to have prepared during the day. Whereas in Dungeons and Dragons, you can only do this when you have a long rest. You can't just magically change what spells you've got prepared. This is true for all of the spellcasters, actually. So spellcasters are a bit more powerful here than they are in Dungeons and Dragons. Anyway, the wizard itself, great choice of spells. Got some absolute classics like Firebolt. Got AoE spells, which are quite rare in the game at the lower levels. Got spells that are called utility spells. They increase speed or jump distance. Magic Missile, only class to get this spell at the moment. Absolutely amazing, guaranteed hits. Find familiar, like whatever you want to be done by magic, wizards can do apart from healing. And I don't think there are any direct buffs at the moment. Oh no, we've got a jump already in Long Strider. Of course there are buffs. And mage armor and so on. So, a wizard, easily a solid pick. Pretty much want one in your party. Here he is looking over the crash of the Nautiloid. In terms of which subclass to pick, which class of magic to have your wizard follow, I'd say currently in early access the Evocation School is the one to go for. The Abjuration School just 
the, the arcane ward doesn't give a great bonus and doesn't stack properly with temporary hit points at the moment so, so it's not really worth it and the evocation school is great because you don't have to worry as much about the positioning of your allies or if your allies are all clustered around a single enemy or it wouldn't be a single enemy but a group of enemies you can just jump in there and cast an aoe spell if you need to go and cast shockwave go and cast shatter and your party will be fine you don't need to worry about it of course the downsides to wizards normally low number of hit points and low armor class however some of the races or sub races to give you medium armor proficiency so you can overcome that in terms of having low number of hit points you could cast aid from a cleric or in a, what's this false life by the wizard itself and if you really want to you could use the feats which is tough gives you an extra two hit points per level it doesn't seem like much um, currently this wizard here is level three but if you had that it'd have 26 hit points which is the second highest of anyone in my party so you don't there aren't too many downsides to the wizard at basically at lower levels the wizard is quite squishy quite prone to dying but once you get past maybe level three it's not so bad you can definitely survive we've got ways of increasing the armor class even by using mage armor and so on right if you have enjoyed the video please leave a like if you've got anything to say whether you agree with me you dislike what i've written written dislike what i've said think i've missed something out think I've said something works and it doesn't work, please leave a comment. All subscriptions are appreciated and I will see you in the next one.